So we now move on to the next uh, presentation, which comes from the University of Edinburgh and the Hebrew University of Jerusalem by Barbara Scarabella, Mitz Ota, and Inbal Arnon. And uh, its name is Clap Your Hands or Take Your Hands, One-Year-Olds Distinguish Between Frequent and Infrequent Multi-Word Phrases. And the floor is yours for 18 minutes. Hello, everyone. Um, can you see my presentation now? Excellent, thank you. Um, we, we actually see your, oh, now we do. I'm just slow, sorry. Um, I'm on holidays. Um, anyway, I've, um, it's lovely to be here. Greetings from Scotland. Um, thank you for, for the invitation. Um, uh, I'm happy to present, uh, this is a joint project between developmental linguists from the University of Edinburgh and Inval Arnon from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. And um, to give you some context for what, um, what this study was about, um, is the study was motivated by um, uh, one of the key questions in, in linguistics and concerns um, the building blocks of language. What are the building blocks of language? And traditionally, um, the role of building blocks um, has been associated with words. And this concept, um, this idea has influenced um, essentially many areas of linguistics and it's been very influential in language acquisition. And um, what I'm going to focus on today is um, the question of building blocks in child language development. And the work builds very much on um, Inbal's idea of starting big approach. So um, let me uh, start with, to give you some context. Um, traditionally, the way uh, we describe uh, language acquisition, child language development is um, starting from smaller units um, to larger units. So starting with words and only eventually and um, slowly combining words into um, larger phrases and um, word combinations. And so the process overall is understood in a rather hierarchical um, fashion. And yet, um, historically, from studies from the 70s, um, researchers have observed that um, children, once they start producing language in the early stages, are very much showing signs that um, there are other units. Um, they go beyond um, individual words. Um, and we see evidence of multi-word combinations um, in their speech. So we see that two-year-olds, which is the age around when children start combining words into um, utterances, um, these utterances are relatively restricted um, and very much resemble uh, the multi-word sequences that they're exposed to um, in child-directed speech. In addition, um, multi-word combinations um, seem to also influence um, uh, children's ability to, to repeat um, phrases. They are much more comfortable, they're faster and more accurate um, when they repeat forward phrases um, that they are more frequently exposed to in, in the input. Um, so uh, now a classic study by Daniel Matthews shows that um, children are much better at the age of two and three, much better at repeating forward um, phrases that are um, sort of more familiar, like sit in your chair, um, and much less frequent phrases like sit, sit in your truck generate um, more errors. And in older children, um, when they get around the age of four, we have very nice evidence showing that multi-word combinations also facilitate their production of irregular morphology, specifically irregular plurals. Um, and it's the irregular plurals that are uh, embedded in more frequent, more familiar sequences. So um, it's much, um, they're much more on target when um, to generate a general pl uh, a plural of a phrase uh, in brush your teeth um, instead of something in, in a context that's much less common. 
And um, in addition to production facilitation of multi-word combinations, we also, we also have some evidence that multi-word combinations influence um, processing, language processing. So two-year-olds are faster um, and more accurate at identifying the reference of a target noun that's embedded in a familiar phrase. So when we um, sort of signal uh, a referent with um, a contextual phrase like where is, their prediction of the upcoming noun um, is facilitated. So there's some evidence that both um, words and multi-word sequences um, do influence um, stages of language development when children start combining um, words into, um, into sentences, phrases. The question um, that we were trying to address um, with our study was really extending um, this kind of evidence to younger stages. Um, and we wanted to find out whether multi-word sequences actually matter um, and are uh, represented, uh, even in the context of pre-verbal infants, before they start, before we see evidence in their speech um, of their production. So, uh, ah, sorry. Um, so the, the question we tested here um, was whether pre-verbal infants around um, 11 months are sensitive to multi-word combinations um, before they begin producing them, before we see evidence of their um, combinations in, in their speech. And um, the idea was that if we do find um, that pre-verbal infants uh, show sensitivity to multi-word combinations, um, then it would add to the growing evidence, extensive evidence um, for the starting big approach. Now, the way we did it um, was we used something called a central fixation paradigm. And um, this paradigm um, builds on a very well-established observation that when children listen um, to something they're familiar with or interested in, um, they get fixated on an image that is centrally presented on a screen. Um, so here you have um, a little vignette um, from our lab from the pre-pandemic times, um, where you see a mother with her son um, on her lab. The mother has headphones on. Um, we do allow our mothers to watch what's happening, um, but they're listening to masking music, not to hear the audio. Um, and um, uh, in front of them is a TV screen um, with a gray background and a green circle that is changing in size. And our babies are sort of facing the screen um, comfortably. We make them feel comfortable with playing some classical music and children's laughter in the background. Um, and then we start playing uh, an audio with our test trials. And the test trials that um, our infants were exposed to included um, trials with um, frequent three-word combinations uh, and infrequent three-word combinations. Um, and uh, the idea was that um, if infants recognize and are familiar um, with um, our three-word combinations, they will get fixated on the centrally presented image. So we were measuring um, their eye gaze as they were listening to our um, two types of um, uh, trials. So the frequent trials, um, which would be an example like clap your hands and a carefully controlled infrequent trial like take your hands. We tested 38 infants. They were all typically developing and growing up in Scotland. Um, and they were all around the age of um, 11, uh, 11 months, 11, 12 months. And uh, the reason, as I've mentioned, is it is around this age when um, children start producing their first words, but we don't really see signs of word combinations and certainly not the type of combinations that um, we have tested um, with our trials.
So um, we selected based on two corpora of child-directed speech. We selected, um, we carefully selected 12 pairs of high and low frequency trigrams, so three words combinations. Um, and um, the test items um, were, uh, there were pairs of combinations like clap your hands and um, take your hands. In each pair, the sequence differed in trigram frequency. So we had um, high and low frequency examples, but they were all matched for uh, substring frequency. So each word and biogram um, were matched. So for example, clap your hands was the higher frequency example and take your hands low frequency example, um, but clap and take and clap your and take your um, were also um, matched for frequencies. And all these examples were audio recorded by a female speaker of Southern British English using infant directed speech. Um, and all the examples were controlled for um, acoustic properties, so at zero frequencies, um, et cetera. And so to present um, findings, um, it's very straightforward. Um, what we see here are the results. Um, on the x-axis, you see um, frequent, uh, a bar that is representing, on your left, that is representing the frequent trials and a bar that's representing the infrequent trials. Um, and um, what you see on the y-axis are the mean looking times in seconds um, for each condition. Um, so, and you also see what um, I've left in are all the lines um, that are representing means of all individual participants. So we had 36 um, participants and all of them are um, reported here. And the results were pretty straightforward. What we found um, was that um, our infants looked longer um, in the trials with frequent trigrams as compared to the infrequent trigrams. Um, the individual differences that you may have been able to spot um, in some cases, um, we found no effect of age or gender um, that could account for this, for this variation. And so um, to summarize and uh, conclude this very straightforward study, um, what we found, what the study shows is the first evidence that children as young as 11 months of age are sensitive to the frequency of multi-word combinations um, in infant directed speech. And this happens before they begin to um, produce them, before we see any evidence of their production. And um, so this suggests that infants do represent multi-word information from a very early stage. And uh, this supports the starting big um, uh, approach and really extends the extensive evidence that has now been um, uh, accumulated um, for the importance of multi-word sequences in language acquisition for adults and older children. Um, and really points out that they play a critical role in, um, in language acquisition, even in uh, the early stages. And so one of the ways um, multi-word sequences can facilitate um, uh, language acquisition at this stage is in, fa in fact, um, it, is, uh, it may be that multi-word sequences are allowing children to break into um, the larger grammatical system. So knowing how words co-occur can free up um, processing resources and help uh, younger children predict and learn upcoming linguistic material. And so we, we have seen that um, younger infants um, around 18 months of age are in fact taking advantage of um, recognizing um, and learning new words uh, in familiar multi-word combinations, um, as in look at the doggy or where's the baby. Um, this kind of familiar phrase helps them um, recognize and learn um, new, um, new, new words, 
but also um, it may help them learn grammatical relations as has been shown for, for adults. And in the context as proposed by usage-based approaches um, to general language and language acquisition, comparing multi-word sequences to each other um, may also help children discover grammatical regularities as we've seen um, with uh, irregular inflection, uh, irregular morphology, but also inflection detecting um, when speakers use um, present or past tense, you walk, you walked. Uh, and it may become much more significant in languages um, with rich inflectional morphology. Um, and again, uh, in the context of the starting big approach, um, as Inbal has um, pointed out, multi-word sequences uh, may be critical in learning um, semantically more arbitrary relations um, between words, including gender marking and um, prepositions, um, verb preposition pairing. Um, so overall, the current findings um, support the idea that um, Grammatical knowledge, linguistic knowledge in general, is learned by abstracting over stored examples. We've seen that um, young infants have stores and um, represented this multi-word, frequent multi-word units. Um, and that these examples are of varying sizes, um, not only single words. And that's me. Um, and if you saw me slightly startled, it's because I saw running a herd of sheep um, on the road, which was completely unexpected. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, time for questions, even two more minutes, two over five, yeah, seven minutes. Okay. Uh, has anybody yet? Yeah, okay, so... Uh, Sabine, please. Yeah, hi. Thanks Hello. so much for this really interesting talk. I, um, I was just um, um, wondering how can you did you control for that this is kind of really like several words or for the kids? So it doesn't necessarily, I mean, if it's for us several words, but how did you um, kind of um, yeah, decide that? Okay, so um, yeah, I think that I, I went through the, the methodology um, a bit too fast. Um, but so in terms of the um, trigram generation, um, I think I've described the process that we used um, the two corpora of um, a child directed speech. Um, and what we expected um, were um, three words combinations um, and paired them up for, for frequencies. Uh, and then we set up our trials where we used, we selected 12 pairs um, and we created our trials um, using uh, six, um, a subset of these 12 pairs um, and created a set A where we combine six examples, um, like clap your hands. Um, and if we go, actually, let me share, this is a bit too abstract, so let me share. Uh, the example here, where you might be able to see um, our pairs. So we would have six frequent um, uh, trigrams um, as part of one frequent trial. And this would be part of our set A. Then we would have a set A1 or A2, where we would have um, six trigrams that did not overlap and, um, and were from the second set of 12 infrequent trials. And we would use these together, the infrequent and frequent trigram um, six sets uh, for a single uh, participant, okay? And then uh, another participant would get um, an example um, with the infrequent um, three words combination uh, from the set A and um, the frequent um, combination of three word uh, sequences from the opposite set. So that we don't have an overlap between take it off and shake it off. Okay, so they basically, the infants were exposed to examples of six um, 
for frequent trials, examples of six um, with um, infrequent examples, um, but each infant would um, be exposed to examples that do not overlap, um, as in take it off and shake it off. Does it make sense? Did it help, Sabine? Yes, thanks. thanks. Okay. Barbara, Barbara, if I can just add to the answer. Yes. Yes. And then another relevant thing, thanks. Another relevant, and thank you for, the, for giving a great talk, as always. Um, another relevant factor is that so the, the lexical words were controlled for frequency, and it's true, we do not know whether kids at this stage are treating them as three segmented words or not. We don't know. No. Well, that is true. Know, we don't know that. We simply can't know that because we didn't test their lexical knowledge. Well, we know that for them to show any difference between the two, they have to have represented information about the sequence, the whole sequence itself. Um, and the words themselves were, um, how, I can't remember the percentage now, how many were familiar from the CDI? Did you check yeah. that? There were, uh, I, should, I should know that. Um, and I, that... Also, I should also know that. Um, but but uh, uh, a lot of them were familiar to kids at that age, but not in, not in production, obviously, because these are kind of pre-verbal. Um, I mean, they're like 11 months old. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And, and just to add, so when you look at these examples, um, so you see that turn the page is very frequently in the input. Um, and it's, yeah, we, it's very unlikely that a child um, at this age would be producing uh, turn the page. Um, I think that it's parents who are very well trained um, to do so. Um, so uh, it, and um, another point that's important, given that um, the uh, substring frequencies were matched, um, we are quite confident that it is the multi-word frequencies, um, that the frequency of the multi-word frequencies that really matter because take and shake, um, even when you look at the numbers um, in the table, in the full table in, in our paper, you see that they are very, very closely uh, matched for frequencies. So if, um, um, the overlap is significant, the difference is a single word. And that seems to be, that is um, what our study shows makes a difference. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, our time for questions is up, sorry. So uh, we should move on to the next presentation. Thank you very much for having me. If you Bye. have any questions, um, please email us, me. Um, I might be slow, given that I'm surrounded by sheep at this point. Thank um, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.